So I'll be showing us how to integrate the exam control panel with the WordPress CMS and how we get to use both in the local host setting. So we get to use the exam control panel to create a local host environment and then integrate the WordPress CMS. Showing on the screen right now is the XAM control panel. The XAM software has been installed on this laptop. So I'll be breaking down the steps into three. The three different steps you take to successfully integrate the WordPress CMS with the XAM. Before we get started, we need to make sure our XAM control panel is running. There are five different modules showing on the exam control panel at the moment. And our business there is just two. We need to start the first one, which is the upper key, and then my SQL. So what we do is to proceed to the start button of the first, click on it, and also proceed to the start button of SQL and as well click on it. So those two modules are running. You get to see the start changing to stop. You also get to see some numbers showing under the port and, of course, the PID. That basically implies the two ports are running. So you need to have this environment set whenever you want to use ZAM. Those two buttons need to be running before you get started with anything at all. So proceeding to the three different steps now. The very first thing we want to do is to create a database for our website. Any website basically needs a database. We want to proceed to create a sort of storage, which is going to be on our local system now for our database. So how do we do that? As long as these two buttons are running, you can proceed to your browser. So I'm on the browser now, and I get to type localhost in the address bar. Localhost, and I enter. So it's going to bring me down to the localhost dashboard, which you get to see shortly. I'm not connected to the internet, but as long as those two buttons are running, you get to navigate from one page to the other on the localhost environment. So this is the localhost dashboard. Like I said, I'm coming down here to create a database for my website. And the location we create the database from is called the PHP my admin the php my admin so i'm going to proceed to click php my admin on the menu it's the last item on the menu there php my admin the php my admin environment it's loading where i get to create a database for my website so this is the php my admin interface where we're going to create a database for our website. So what do I do now? There's a left hand sidebar, as you can see with different items there. All I need to do is to proceed to click on the new, which is the first item there. New, that signifies I want to create a new database. I click on the new. Then after clicking on the new, it gets to load and you get to see a port where they ask you for the database name. They're asking you for database name. So you need to give your database a name. Depending on the website you're trying to create, your name can also reflect the type of site you're trying, trying to create. So you need to give the database a name. So let's say I give the database my name. For instance, I do a large type there and I proceed to click on create. The second part here, you have no business there. Just put the name and then proceed and click on create. That's the very first step, coming down to your PHP admin to create a database, give it a name, in lower case, preferably without any space. That's the very first step. The second step now has to do with integrating the WordPress content management system, CMS, with the ZAMP. So I'm going to copy a WordPress folder which I have downloaded at the WordPress website. I'm going to provide a link to get the folder in the video description. You get to go to wordpress.org slash download and you'll be able to download that. It comes in a zipped format, but you can always extract a folder out of it. 
So this was WordPress folder I got out of the zip. I'm going to copy that. We're getting started with the second step now. I copy the WordPress folder. And where do I paste? I get to go to my C drive, which is the storage for my database. As you can see here, the C drive is showing there. The local disk is the storage for the database. So I'm coming down there. I'm going to open the C drive. As long as I have XAMPP installed appropriately, I get to see the XAMPP folder showing right here. So I'm going to open the XAMPP folder. And then there's one particular folder that is of interest at this location. The C drive, the XAMPP. The htdocs, htdocs, which serves as the storage for our database. The htdocs folder. I'm going to open the htdocs folder. And right here is where I get to paste the WordPress folder I copied earlier on. I paste the WordPress folder at the htdocs. Again, how do I get to the htdocs? I go to my C drive, which is a storage for my database, my local disk, my hard drive. I open it and I see the XAMPP folder. I open the XAMPP folder. The particular folder that is of interest here is the htdocs folder, which you get to open. And paste that WordPress folder at the htdocs. Paste the WordPress folder at the htdocs. So after successfully pasting the WordPress folder at this location, the last thing you're supposed to do there is to edit that WordPress folder. Click on the WordPress and go and rename the WordPress folder. What do you rename to? You rename to same database name you created earlier on. Same database name you created earlier on. So I renamed the WordPress folder here to Adiola, showing that. So that is the end of the second step. Copying the WordPress folder, pasting at the htdocs location, and then renaming to same database name you created at the PHP admin. The interesting thing about this two steps is the fact that you can actually do either first. I could decide to copy the WordPress folder first and come to my htdocs, paste and then rename to any given name I want before proceeding to the PHP admin to create a new database and then giving it same name. What matters there is that you need to use same and exact name at both ends, lowercase without space preferably. So the third step now starting with the third step you can go back to your browser and then you can open a new tab and you have to put in your domain name on the tab so the question is what is your domain on the local host environment on the local host setting here yeah, your domain name is always localhost slash forward slash your database name localhost forward slash your database name Whatever your database name is, you just add it there. Look at O slash Adiola written here. Then I enter. Beginning the third step now. So I have this welcome to WordPress. Before getting started, you need to know the following items database name, username, password, host, and then table prefix. So I'm going to proceed to click on let's go to get it started with the WordPress installation with the third step. Before below you should enter your database connection details. If you are not sure about this, contact your host. The first thing they are asking for is database name. WordPress written there by default. You erase it and put the appropriate database name which you've created. And then we have the username, we have the password. Interesting thing about these two fields is the fact that they are always constant. There's a code name you use, there's a code figure you use for this username known as root, R O O T, which you get to use always at this particular location, at this particular stage. Then the password, you proceed to the password and erase the password and leave it empty, blank, vacant. So the last two as well, you leave them the way they are. The only thing that keeps changing at this location, in case you're trying to create another database, is actually the database name. 
you're creating a new one now what changes it's just the database name the username is still root the password is still blank and the last two still constant before you proceed to submit so i have all right sparky you've made it through this part of the installation wordpress can now communicate with your database if you're ready time to and there's a run the installation button so there's a communication between wordpress and our database because of the fact that we've integrated wordpress folder and also renamed that folder to same database name we created earlier on so there's a communication between the two ends so i'm going to proceed to run the installation Welcome to the famous 5 minutes WordPress installation process. Just fill in the information below and you will be on your way to using the most extendable and powerful personal publishing platform in the world. So we are this installation process here where they are asking us to fill this form. The first thing there is the site title. The site title is the title of your website. It's like the headline of your website. So you can put in an headline there. It could still be similar to your database name, but in this case, you can actually customize. You can, you know, make it uppercase, lowercase. You can add space, whichever way you want to add it. You can, and you can always still change this later. So if you're not sure about what to use, you can just put something there for the time being, and you can take it out later on. And then the username, the username on this end, and then we have password. Unlike the previous one we just saw. This username and password have to do with your login details, what you use to log into the back end of your site, so log into the WordPress dashboard of your website. So you could proceed to still use your first name as a username, your nickname, any name. You know, you could also decide to use admin as the username. Whatever name you want to use falls back to you. And then the password, we have a generated password there. You could decide to stick with that and copy just paste somewhere or you could decide to erase and you know use a password of your choice any password of your choice as long as it's something you can always remember but on this local o setting personally i always advise you still using the database name as a password i always advise that even though it's going to be very weak but because of the fact that there's no single threat to our website there's no single thread to the website. I could decide to stick with this and just use the database name as a password. I could go on and confirm use of which password. And then the email, you could also go ahead and put your email. And then the last thing there, search engine visibility. And there's a checkbox which says discourage search engines from indexing this site. So in case you want to discourage search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Co. from indexing your sites, that's from showing your site on their platform. You can check that box of course there's a clause right on that it is up to search engines to honor this request so even though you're trying to tell search engines not to index your site it's left to them to either honor or just honor your request of course we want our site to be visible on the search engines we want visibility so we're not going to check that but that is the explanation for that particular thing so i get to proceed to install wordpress Confirm your username and password before proceeding to install WordPress. And then you can click on the install WordPress button. So WordPress has been installed. You can see success. WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. So there's a login button. Let's try logging to the back end of the site, which is the WordPress dashboard. So they're asking for my username. I use admin. And then you ask for the password too. I use my database name as a password. I can decide to check remember me if I want. I just decide to just log in. So I'm going to arrive at the WordPress dashboard, which is showing on the screen, which is as well a back end for this case. The back end is where you manage from, why the front end is the interface your customers, your visitors see. Well, on the back end, you get to do all the management from. So this is the back end, which is the WordPress dashboard for this particular structure we have in place. So that's the end of the third step. A recap of the three different steps again. The first one is to create your database at the phpMyAdmin. The second one is to integrate your WordPress CMS by copying the WordPress folder, going to your C drive, opening the XAMPP folder, and then opening the HG docs. 
pasting the WordPress folder as the HD docs and then renaming to the same database name you created earlier on. And then the last step, which is the WordPress installation, is going to your browser back and putting in your domain. And then your domain is localhost forward slash your database name. Then you get to follow the prompt till you are able to log in to the WordPress dashboard. <music>